Moments ago, Fan stood tall, but was swiftly obliterated by Kuang Ti's devastating attack, sending him sliding backwards. Luan observed, horrified by the overwhelming power of Kuang Ti's, fearing he had transformed into a monstrous force. Determined, Luan knew he would need to unleash the dragon inspiration and combine it with his claw to stand a chance against this formidable opponent. Meanwhile, standing beside Kuang Ti's, the princess angrily demanded Fan's death, consumed by her fury. In response to the princess's command, Kuang Ti's prepared to strike, pulling his staff free from the ground. However, before he could launch his attack, Wei Fu Dragon Xiao leapt through a window and transformed into her majestic dragon form, stunning both the princess and Kuang Ti's. They could only mutter in disbelief. It's a real dragon? The chapter opened with the princess chastising Kuang Ti's for his perceived weakness and urging him to endure as she began casting a spell. Yet, in an instant, Xiaoyi's roar echoed with such force that the princess was thrown back, her spell interrupted. Activating her own skill, Dragon Bloodline, Xiaoyi reduced incoming damage by 50%, gained immunity to debuffs, and enhanced her self-healing by 500%. With fierce determination, the dragon slammed Kuang Ti's to the ground, rendering him powerless and reduced to pleading for mercy. Being the noble dragon that she was, Xiaoyi complied and hurled Kuang Ti's towards the princess, his impact creating a crater upon landing on the road. As he lay there, apologizing for his weakness, Xiaoyi believed he should be apologizing to Ant and Lu Fan instead. Witnessing Kuang Ti's pitiful state, the princess questioned if this was the true power of a real dragon. It dawned on her that other true dragons existed beyond the Jin family's feeble defense of lizards. Before she could recover from her shock, Lu Fan's voice called out to her, snapping her out of her thoughts. She watched as Lu Fan approached like a villain, gripping a large black machete in his right hand, daring her to strike him down in her fury. Startled, she took a step back and stumbled, falling in fear. Stay away from me! You attacked my attendant, injured him, and humiliated me! She screamed, tears streaming down her face. She warned Lu Fan of the consequences of his actions, branding him an enemy of the Taiki Kingdom. To Lu Fan, it seemed like she was merely rambling, trying to play the victim like a typical Karen. Unfazed, he flexed his large black machete and asked if she thought she could scare him. Closing the distance between them, eyes burning with anger, he confronted the princess, accusing her of sending men to harm his family. Don't think being some princess from the Taiki Kingdom gives you immunity. Lu Fan declared coldly. Even if you're a god, I'll make sure to repay you with interest. The princess trembled, realizing the gravity of her situation as Lu Fan raised his machete, poised to strike. But just as he prepared to deliver the blow, a voice called his name from a distance. It was Qin Shan Hai, little Qin's father, soaring toward them on a griffin. Dad, it's dangerous! Little Qin screamed, warning him of the perilous scene unfolding below. Xiaoyi noticed Jin Shanhai and began charging a massive fireball attack aimed in his direction. However, before she could unleash it, Lu Fan intervened, slashing the staff of the bratty princess with his machete. The dragon halted her attack, and Jin Shanhai landed safely on the ground. He urged Lu Fan to recall Xiaoyi, mindful of the surrounding residents who could be harmed by the escalating situation. Jin Shanhai marveled at the immense pressure emanating from the dragon, realizing true dragons were indeed in a league of their own. Even the griffin showed signs of fear under Xiaoyi's overwhelming presence. Little Qin pleaded with Lu Fan to trust them, assuring him they were on his side. Heeding their words, Lu Fan called Xiaoyi back, and she transformed instantly into her humanoid form. Little Qin then grabbed Lu Fan's arm, urging him to follow her, while Qin Shanhai addressed the princess, questioning her actions and mentioning he had come to pick them up at the airport. Unaware of the current turmoil, he mentioned that the Chin family driver would be here soon to take them to the hospital. The scene then shifts to inside the bun shop, where Ed explains that little Chin's father knows the bratty princess and might be able to resolve the conflict. Little Chin called her father and informed him about the current situation, prompting his arrival, Lu Fan remarked, foreseeing the princess's persistence. As they discussed, Qin Shanhai entered and acknowledged his understanding of the situation, jesting that Lu Fan seemed to attract trouble effortlessly. Lu Fan apologized for the incident but clarified that this time, the fault lay with the bratty princess. 
The ant inquired how today's events would be handled. Qin Shanghai explained that both the princess and Kuang Ti's had been taken to the hospital and emphasized the need to explain matters to the Jin family. He noted the Jin family's substantial business influence and their connections in the kingdom's upper echelons. Concerned, the ant wondered if Lu Fan would face repercussions for striking them despite their power. Even if she holds immense power, it doesn't matter. I won't compromise my dignity for a dragon's favor, Lu Fan asserted confidently. Impressed by Lu Fan's integrity, Qin Shanghai praised him and assured him of his protection. While casually smoking, he disclosed that he couldn't handle the situation alone and presented a condition. What condition? Lu Fan asked. To achieve the position of South Province champion in the grand exam, Qin Shanghai replied, pointing his cigarette at Lu Fan. He explained that if Lu Fan surpassed countless top students to become the champion, he would support him in dealing with the bratty princess until the exam concluded. Upon hearing this, Little Chin noted the challenge ahead, considering the competition across the entire South Province. Only if you surpass them and become the champion will I be able to assist you, Chin Shanghai added with a determined nod. With a determined expression, Lu Fan agreed to Chin Shanghai's condition. The scene then shifted to the hospital where the bratty princess stormed about angrily, shouting into her phone. She accused Chin Shanghai of favoring Lu Fan because he hadn't been apprehended yet. On the other end of the call, someone tried to placate the princess, promising to contact high-ranking officials to resolve the situation. Unappeased, the princess demanded they exert pressure on the officials, asserting her authority and vowing to kill Lu Fan. Clearly, she hadn't learned her lesson. But who could challenge our Giga Chat MC with his dragon waifu by his side? Share your thoughts in the comments below. The scene then transitioned to the next day at 3rd middle school, just before the South Province Grand Exam. Students gathered in the playground, sizing each other up and forming groups. Suddenly, all eyes turned as Lu Fan returned to the school. Some speculated he had returned to sell steamed buns, while others dismissed him, labeling him as trash despite his previous academic brilliance. Nevertheless, Lu Fan was no longer the same. Though nostalgic for old gossip, he couldn't be bothered with petty squabbles anymore. The Grandmaster's voice cut through the murmurs, commanding the students to settle down as he announced the imminent start of the South Province Grand Exam. Lu Fan stood among them, reflecting that even after self-improving to level 15, he hadn't yet utilized the daily treasure maps he received. Lu Fan stood contemplating the intermediate level treasure maps he had accumulated, pondering how to combine them into a high level one for better preparation ahead of the big exam. Lost in thought, he was interrupted by someone calling his name, asking if he too was participating in the upcoming grand exam. Turning around, he saw his teacher approaching. Lu Fan nodded affirmatively, explaining that he had been diligently training to enhance his strength. Impressed, the teacher handed him a teleportation stone, praising his dedication and noting his strong fighting spirit, which rivaled that of seasoned professionals. Smiling, Lu Fan examined the stone he now held. It was of rare quality and had specific functionalities. In the trial's secret realm, it teleported the user to the first floor of the Heavenly Tower. In the Heavenly Tower itself, it transported the user to the trial secret realm platform. After inspecting the stone, the teacher cautioned Lu Fan about the gravity of the exam. Though it was just a test, any misstep could lead to injury or worse. Advising caution, he urged Lu Fan to find a reliable teammate for the trial. If things became too challenging, he should use the teleportation stone to exit safely rather than risking further complications. Lu Fan smiled at his teacher and replied confidently, It's okay, teacher. After the teacher departed, some students nearby began gossiping about Lu Fan, questioning his abilities and background. Lu Fan paid them no mind, focusing instead on his goal, not just to pass the trial, but to come in first place, as he had promised Qin Shanghai. In the next moment, someone called out to Lu Fan. Turning around, he saw little Qin approaching with another girl. Lu Fan wondered if this new girl could potentially become his third, waifu. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments below. Lu Fan asked if the new girl was Little Chin's teammate. She confirmed and introduced her as her best friend, Zhao Man, a level 1 combat professional swordsman. Zhao Man greeted Lu Fan warmly, but before she could say much, Little Chin interrupted, asking Lu Fan if he would like to team up with them for the trial. 
Zhao Man was taken aback by the proposal. To Little Chin's surprise, Lu Fan politely declined, explaining that he intended to participate in the exam alone. He acknowledged Little Chin's desire to help but emphasized that this was a personal condition he had set for himself. With a wave, Lu Fan bid farewell to the girls and headed towards the exam site. Little Chin felt a twinge of disappointment, realizing she had missed an opportunity to work with the boy of her dreams. Nonetheless, she wished him luck, believing that with his strength level, anyone who teamed up with Lu Fan at this point would only hold him back. After Lu Fan left, Zhao Man questioned Little Chin about why she invited someone from the weakest profession to team up with Lu Fan. Little Chin confidently defended Lu Fan, stating that he was strong and would undoubtedly become the top scorer in the southern province, whether Zhao Man believed it or not. Zhao Man was surprised by Little Chin's assertion and jokingly asked if she was falling in love with Lu Fan, noticing her flushed cheeks. Little Chin quickly denied it, claiming she was just imagining things, though her blush betrayed her true feelings. Zhao Man teased her further, pointing out her reddened cheeks as she continued to protest. The scene shifted to the grand exam trial secret realm. Lu Fan walked confidently through the portal, remarking, this is where it all begins. On a large screen, the principal announced the division of portals into four levels, normal, hard, fear, and nightmare. Each level corresponded to different challenges, with candidates entering the heavenly tower via the teleportation stone distributed by their teacher earlier. The normal level featured projections without fatal consequences, with a score multiplier of 0.9x. From the hard level onwards, all challenges involved real monsters, and using the teleportation stone allowed students to safely exit while preserving their scores. The score multiplier for the hard level was 1.0x. It appeared that most students opted for the hard level, as the higher realms were typically chosen by those in hidden professions. The principal continued his explanation, cautioning that the higher realms like fear were considered suicidal for normal professions due to the ferocity of the monsters. He emphasized that solo challenges in these realms were not recommended, urging students to prioritize their safety over score sharing. The score multiplier for the fear realm was 3.0x. Amidst the instructions, a voice rang out confidently as Hong Wu, a Qigong master at level 14, declared he would set the highest score in the exam. Xiaoman noted his reputation as the top expert at their school and a top 5 contender in the province. Zhao Man explained that Qigong masters were versatile, excelling in both offense and defense. She mentioned Hong Wu's plan to solo the Hard Realm Challenge. Other students resigned themselves, acknowledging they couldn't compete and would aim for lower rankings. The scene shifted to the principal's office, where screens displayed various students. The principal of number 1 middle school chuckled, praising Hongwu as their most formidable student, confident in his victory and potential as the top scorer. He also commended Little Chin, suggesting she could rank in the top three. Lu Fan's principal expressed regret, believing Lu Fan could have taken first place if he had awakened another hidden profession. Lost in thought, Chin Shanghai hinted that he had a promising candidate in mind for the top spot. The principal expressed optimism about his candidate for the top spot. When asked who he meant, Qin Shanghai confidently named Lu Fan, the dragon tamer from O3 school. Lu Fan's principal was stunned by this revelation, while the principal from number one school noted that all students had already entered the heavenly tower except Lu Fan. He questioned if Lu Fan was giving up on the exam, laughing incredulously and dismissing Lu Fan as just a dragon tamer. Pointing at the scoreboard, he highlighted that Hong Wu was already on the fourth floor and likely leading in scores. Lu Fan's principal suddenly realized something and, with a shocked expression, explained that Lu Fan wasn't giving up. He was waiting for the portal of the highest difficulty level to appear, the Nightmare Trial. The principal from number one school erupted, shouting that the Nightmare Trial was a one-way path and that Lu Fan was overly confident. As if on cue, the Nightmare Trial portal appeared in the sky, displaying a daunting score multiplier of 9.9x. Despite protests, Lu Fan prepared to enter the trial realm with a smile. The principal from number one school grew increasingly concerned, noting that no one who had dared the nightmare trial in the past eight years had returned unharmed. The last challenger had met a grisly fate, devoured by ferocious beasts, which the principal described as a miserable death. Principal Bai of number one school questioned whether Lu Fan had been properly educated about the rules of the grand exam, asserting that the dragon tamer was surely doomed. 
He criticized Qin Shanghai's judgment, suggesting Lu Fan couldn't compare to Hong Wu at all. In response, Qin Shanghai winked, suggesting they focus on observing the Qigong master's performance instead. He urged patience, stating it was too early to draw conclusions and suggesting they observe a bit longer without making hasty deductions. Principal Bai pressed Qin Shanghai on why he trusted Lu Fan so much. As they debated, Lu Fan entered the first floor of the nightmare trial. Moments later, a paw emerged from the dense fog towards Lu Fan, followed by several pairs of glowing red eyes surrounding him. In an instant, he found himself encircled by monsters. Lu Fan swiftly drew his big black machete and assumed a defensive stance, estimating there were at least 10 creatures closing in on him. From the fog emerged black mane wolves, each at level 10. Their bite attacks inflicted continuous bleeding damage, while their skill Night Howl enhanced their allies' attributes and reset their cooldowns. One of the wolves roared and lunged at Lu Fan. Maintaining his composure, Lu Fan countered with Dragonfang Strike. Lu Fan effortlessly sliced through all the black mane wolves with a single attack, leaving them in smoldering ruins. The notification promptly announced his completion of the first floor of the Nightmare Trial Sky Tower, awarding him an instant 990 points. The principal of number one middle school was astonished. One hit kill, what's the deal with this Lu Fan? He's ridiculously strong, he exclaimed. The other principals agreed, noting that Lu Fan's attributes clearly surpassed his peers. Principal Bai pondered aloud if Lu Fan had perhaps encountered the legendary dragon. With 990 points, Lu Fan surged to the second position on the scoreboard. Meanwhile, in the surveillance room where the directors of number one middle school were monitoring, a figure in a detective suit entered. The person had one hand casually in their pocket and held a briefcase in the other, sporting a cap and glasses. The directors found it hard to believe Lu Fan had dispatched the wolves with a single blow. The detective's abrupt entrance drew everyone's attention. Upon hearing his voice, Qin Shanghai turned alertly to face him. Introducing himself as Kong Xing, a special representative from Longdu, he stated he was here to investigate someone and take them back to Longdu. He removed his cap and fixed his gaze on Qin Shanghai, inquiring about the Dragon Master, Lu Fan. A window displaying Kong Xing's statistics revealed he was level 57 specialized in combat. Meanwhile, Lu Fan proceeded in the nightmare trial, methodically cutting through vines with his big black machete. With one hand manipulating the machete and the other navigating the system map that had appeared before him, Lu Fan continued his journey through the treacherous trial. Feeling a rush of satisfaction, Lu Fan realized he had found the exact location marked on his treasure map as indicated by a system window. Another prompt followed, notifying him that a high-level treasure map had been created. Excitement bubbled within Lu Fan as he examined the system map. The high-level treasure map he had prepared before entering the trial realm pinpointed the first floor of the celestial tower. Pressing onward, Lu Fan skillfully cut through thorny plants obstructing his path and stumbled upon a book. He reached out and grasped it, triggering an alert window on his screen announcing his acquisition of a skill book named, Accelerated Growth. The book radiated a soft glow, its cover adorned with several embedded gems. According to the statistics window, Accelerated Growth was a highly valuable skill book that taught a passive ability to enhance growth rates. Specifically, it boosted pet experience gain by 100%. Curious and eager, Lu Fan promptly opened the book, unleashing a surge of potent energy that enveloped his body. He immediately felt the effects of the skill, enhancing his own growth capabilities. He envisioned the skill's potential utility for nurturing nocturnal creatures like Xiao Yi, whose leveling progress he found frustratingly slow in the morning village. Clenching his fist, empowered by the newfound ability, Lu Fan resolved to make the most of his discovery as he continued his journey through the Celestial Tower. With the newfound passive skill, Lu Fan anticipated Xiao Yi's accelerated leveling. Meanwhile, in the room where Director Bai, Shan Hai, and Chang Shang observed Lu Fan through a screen, Kong Xing urged Director Bai to interrupt Lu Fan's trial and summon him back immediately due to his status as a student of their school. Director Bai regarded Kong Xing seriously and explained that they should wait until after the exams were concluded, regardless of the urgency of the matter. He asserted his readiness to take responsibility for Lu Fan's actions as head of the Third Institute. Kong Xing responded that while Director Bai could shoulder responsibility for Lu Fan, he couldn't spare Lu Fan from any potential repercussions. 
Perplexed, Director Bai asked Kong Xing to clarify what consequences he was referring to. Shan Hai intervened, stepping forward and gently urging Chang Shang to reconsider due to their long-standing friendship. He implored him to pay attention to the situation unfolding. An official from Number One Middle School interjected, questioning Lu Fan's involvement. Kong Xing swiftly turned and applied subtle pressure, causing Shan Hai to release Chang Shang's arm, leaving him momentarily confused. Kong Xing rebuked Shan Hai for interfering and warned him not to approach him again during his task. He added that any interference could anger the Jin family and top Dragon Clan members, though he didn't understand why Shan Hai was defending the Dragon Tamer. Shanghai remained silent, his expression serious as he locked eyes with Kong Xing. Without another word, Kong Xing turned away, pushing Shanghai aside with a firm hand and reiterating his demand for Director Bai to summon Lu Fan. Shanghai's mention of their old friendship briefly caught Kong Xing's attention. Shanghai calmly retrieved a cigarette, lit it, and took a slow drag. He then addressed Kong Xing, hinting at the intricate connections between high-ranking officials in Longdu and the influential Jin family. Complicating matters significantly for both the Dragon Kingdom and the Tai Chi Kingdom. He asserted confidently that once Lu Fan's secrets were revealed, the influence of these powerful figures would diminish. With a serious gaze, Shanghai declared that no one would take Lu Fan away today. Kong Xing, visibly incensed, retorted sharply, dismissing Shanghai's remarks about Lu Fan hiding something. Accusing Shanghai of defiance against his authority as an envoy, Kong Xing turned to leave. Before he could move away, Shanghai firmly grasped his arm, asserting that he would stand by his actions even if they were deemed excessive. Tension crackled between them as the system window indicated Qin Shunhai is a level 57 knight and Kong Xing is a level 57 swordsman. I will report your actions to the higher ups in Longdu, Kong Xing replied angrily. Director Bai intervened, urging them not to disrupt the important exam in progress. Qin Shunhai then prodded Kong Xing, asking if he wasn't curious about Lu Fan's secret, something that could shock both the leaders of Longdu and the Jin family. Realizing Lu Fan was currently in the nightmare level, Kong Xing was visibly taken aback. Meanwhile, Lu Fan stood before a gate, contemplating how far he could push himself relying solely on his abilities. With the newly acquired passive skill, he decided it was time to summon Xiao Yi early to maximize their experience gain. As he summoned the dragon with a resounding call, both Director Bai and Kong Xing were stunned by its sudden appearance. Kong Xing struggled for words, finally managing to mutter, this. This is a dragon. The dragon let out a mighty roar and struck at the gate with its claw. Watching the dragon's attack, Qin Shunhai couldn't help but sweat. Though he had witnessed it before, seeing it again was still profoundly shocking. In the next moment, the dragon completely demolished the door, sending rubble flying everywhere. Turning to everyone in the room, Qin Shunhai asked pointedly if they now understood Lu Fan's secret, as everyone present was visibly affected by the dragon's appearance. Pointing towards the screen, Qin Shunhai declared that Lu Fan was the first dragon tamer in history to possess a real dragon. Principal Bai, still stunned, managed to utter, Lu Fan, really summoned a giant dragon. They continued watching the screen where Lu Fan was progressing through the nightmare trial's second floor. His dragon unleashing torrents of flame that engulfed everything in sight. Massive flames roared around, and Lu Fan effortlessly dispatched giant plant monsters. In an instant, the notification announced that the second floor was cleared. Watching Lu Fan's display of power, the principal of the first middle school marveled at the might of a true dragon tamer. As they continued to watch in shock, the two men behind Qin Shunhai agreed, emphasizing that without the third transformation, no one would be able to compete with Lu Fan. They both expressed their terror at the thought of the dragon's potential after further leveling up, believing it could single-handedly devastate an entire country. The sheer power of the dragon left them speechless. With Lu Fan's completion of the second floor, he soared to the top of the leaderboard with 50,000 points. Hong Wu followed in second place with 27,550 points, while Little Qin and Dao Xiaoman tied for third with 12,570 points each. Lu Fan continued his ascent through the tower, effortlessly conquering each floor with the aid of his dragon. Now, the scene shifted to Lu Fan on the 13th floor of the Nightmare Trial where his dragon ruthlessly dispatched monsters while Lu Fan himself delivered powerful slashes with his big black machete. He showed no mercy as he swiftly cleared the floor, prompting a notification that the 13th floor was now completed. 
Principal Jin marveled at Lu Fan's miraculous increase in strength, noting that his various attributes must now all exceed 100 points. He speculated that even without summoning the giant dragon, Lu Fan could easily rank first in Zhenghai City. Qin Shunhai turned to Kong Xing and asked pointedly, now that he had witnessed the incredible power of a real dragon, did he still intend to bring Lu Fan before the higher ups? Kong Xing replied, acknowledging that witnessing the dragons might had changed his perspective. He now understood why Qin Shunhai dared to defy the Jin family. As Lu Fan ascended to the 20th floor of the Nightmare Trial, he found himself in a dark corridor illuminated only by a distant purple light. As he stood there, a dark sacrifice approached him, casting a menacing magic spell. The creature, a level 15 entity, possessed various formidable abilities. According to the status window that appeared, Dark Control allowed the creature to exert full command over the Dark Knights that fall asterisk asterisk black curse asterisk asterisk decreased all target attributes by 50% while simultaneously increasing all friendly target attributes by 25%. Merge into darkness enabled the creature and its allies to blend into the shadows, rendering them immune to all attacks for 15 seconds. Dark Control allowed the creature to exert full command over the dark knights that followed behind it. Lu Fan assessed the situation calmly, his mind racing with strategies on how to confront this powerful opponent. He knew that facing such a foe would require precision and skill. As Lu Fan stood victorious on the 20th floor of the Nightmare Trial, surrounded by the aftermath of the fiery devastation caused by Xiao Yi's Lava Blaze attack, he felt a surge of accomplishment. The entire floor lay in ruins, with enemies reduced to ash and the air thick with the remnants of magical flames. The notifications flooded in, updating him on the progress. Xiao Yi's Lava Blaze attack had cleared the 20th floor, earning Lu Fan additional points and experience. The Black Dragon's level had increased to 11 due to the bottle's intensity and the accelerated growth effect. Lu Fan himself had reached level 16, reflecting his growing strength and mastery. His score soared to an impressive 90,000 points, firmly securing his lead in the grand exam. With a satisfied smile, Lu Fan addressed Xiao Yi, his faithful dragon companion, affirming their partnership in conquering the Heavenly Tower together. The scene shifted dramatically to the 50th floor of the Fear Trial, where Hong Wu's explosive prowess had just cleared the floor in a blaze of determination and power. His accomplishment echoed through a new notification, announcing the completion of this challenging level. Reflecting on the intense difficulty of this year's grand examination, Hong Wu contemplated the fierce monsters, noting they should normally appear on much higher floors, around the 70th level. Despite the formidable challenges ahead, Hong Wu remained resolute in his ambition to claim the top position in the Southern Province examination. He dismissed Qin Shanghai as his only significant competition due to her team status, which would split her points. In a display of confidence that bordered on arrogance, Hong Wu laughed triumphantly, urging his principal to keep watching his stellar performance. He even suggested that preparations should begin for his admission to the top 10 academies, showcasing his unwavering self-assurance. Meanwhile, the principals in the monitoring room remained fixated on Lu Fan's progress, acknowledging the significant hurdle presented by the 50th floor of the Tower of Letters in the Fear Trial. Principal Jin emphasized that this level historically posed a challenge for all Southern Province scholars, implying its critical importance in separating the exceptional from the merely competent. As the narratives of Hong Wu and Lu Fan unfolded in parallel, the contrast between their approaches to the exam and their characters became increasingly apparent setting the stage for further developments and challenges ahead in the competition. End of chapter. Stay tuned to find out how our formidable MC secures the champion position and navigates new adventures with potential waifus. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support the story and receive notifications for the next exciting installment.